Unsurprisingly, in the Elder Scrolls series, killing citizens of Cyrodiil can garner various, mostly negative reactions from NPCs and the authorities. Stop right there, criminal scum! Nobody breaks the law on my watch! Sadly, if undisturbed, the vanquished victims' bodies are left to languish in the elements and not much more for the most part. Yet in Oblivion's Shivering Isles expansion, the player is instead rewarded for picking off the various demented denizens of New Shaoth. I won't go back. You can't make me go back. I'll kill you all. You're all going to die. <coughs> Bring me a champion. Rend the flesh of my foes, a mortal champion, to wade through the entrails of my enemies. But how? Well, did you know? When the player first arrives at the new Shaoth graveyard, they can visit the few graves littered about and gather insight into some of the previously perished NPCs' lives and demise in the realm of Sheogorath, such as Here Lies Blaze Set, Faster Than the Wind, Dumber Than a Stump. <coughs> Or Helene the Deaf, she never heard it coming. Wah! And Lob Gromergob died. We ate him and buried the bones here. Such is the whimsy of the Mad God that a whopping 28 residents of New Shaoth can be killed in the Shivering Isles and their gravestones will subsequently appear, revealing a cheeky piece of humorous text about the character's life and or death. It'll be in full swing soon. Excited? You shouldn't be. It's the death of all things! So, without further ado, here's a video exploring just what happens when you meet, greet, and murder every NPC in New Shaoth to fill its graveyard. All shall crumble! Rendil Dorara, chef extraordinaire at your service. You haven't truly eaten a decent meal until you've had my strawberry harava, green moat, lime surprise, and spiderling under glass. Randall Drarara is a Dunma commoner and chef extraordinaire who lives in bliss. He is maniacally obsessed with cooking and spends most of his time creating various gastronomical treats using a wide array of exotic ingredients. Make this brief. I have a pot of grumite gumbo simmering on my fire at home. When you exit the conversation, he will say, Farewell, so much to bake, so little time. And when the player or other citizens get near him, the food-obsessed chef will question, Hmm, is that fresh bread I smell? Like a true chef, Rendell always carries a complete set of kitchen utensils around, a pewter bowl with a fork and knife, as well as a respawning carrot and whatever ingredients he's picked up. Unfortunately, his carrying of culinary criteria can lead to disaster, as sometimes when Rendell is on his way to the Sesalum at 2pm, the fork-obsessed big head will attempt to steal Rendell's pewter fork. This, of course, can be avoided by pickpocketing the fork from Rendell without getting caught before big head Detects him. If Randil last smells what the hero is cooking, a flash fried Dunma with a side of irony, his gravestone will read, He's cooked his last meal. This life, it's, well, it's too painful. Everywhere I look, I see death, dying, and decay. When I dream, I see a world without sunshine. I'm constantly on the verge of. Retching up, or falling asleep, or screaming at someone who doesn't deserve it. I'm just so fed up with it all. Hiris Clodumnus is an Imperial commoner living in Crucible and clearly having a bad day when he meets the player. A bad day? A bad day? Try a miserable existence! There's no point in talking about it. Action must be taken. You must. I need you to kill me. Hiris then asks you to end his life as he does not want to commit suicide in fear of ending up as a ghost on the Hill of Suicides. Have you seen those miserable souls on the Hill of Suicides? Do you think that kind of existence is any better than this? No. You must kill me. When asking about how Hiris wishes to die, he suggests... I don't necessarily want to see it coming. And I want to die here in the city so all these people finally believe me. I wish they were nicer. 
You probably want to do it without spectators, though, so you don't get in trouble. Best to make it look like an accident. But remember, I don't want to see it coming. Take me unaware. If you choose to ignore Hiras' instructions, he understandably will become distraught. Stop! Take me unaware! Not like this! It hurts! If instead, following his instructions, you choose to push him, a rather surprised Hiras will shout, What? As he plummets to the ground below. Upon impact, he will whisper, Peace. At last. Thank you. His death will then prompt the nearby Dark Seducer Guard to comment, You really ought to put up a railing. That happens all the time. Although Hiras' body is marked as a quest item, a gravestone will be added to the new Shayoth graveyard if he perishes. And it says, Hiras Cladumnus never felt like he fit in anywhere. He fits in a coffin quite nicely now. Hmm, how do you do? I'd say very well from the look of things. I'm Santerre. Spend one night with me. And I'll remind you why they say love hurts. Sonte is an Ultima bookseller living in Bliss. She owns Books of Bliss, the only bookstore in the Isles. Sonte seems to be quite the seductress, and as such, talking to her when playing a male character causes her to flirt. So, how'd you like to get together later and leaf through my octavo? However, playing a female character, Sonte will instead comment that she doesn't like competition. New around here? Well, we can start off by getting one thing straight. The men around here are mine. You want fresh pickings? Go out and scrounge up some leftovers in a settlement or something. I don't like competition. Just stay away from the menfolk and we'll get along just fine. In both cases, however, Sonter will finish conversations with the player with the scandalous phrase, Got to go. Have things to see and people to do. To witness exactly how seductive Sonterre is, one need only investigate her bedroom on the second floor of her shop. Around her bed are chains and shackles. Sonterre is also one of only two people to wear the light green regalia, the other being Orenthal. She also knows the standard leveled healer spells, probably handy after a rough romp in the playpen from a bit of the old pinch and tickle. Or should I say caliper and shears. Sontaire's sexual escapades seem to be common knowledge as some of the residents can be heard commenting, Sontaire may sell a lot of books, but that's not why the men visit her. If things get a little too rough for Sontaire, <coughs> she will be buried in the New Shouth graveyard and a tombstone will bear the savage inscription. Finally, Sontaire sleeps alone. Have you caught my act yet? I'm Fadal the Juggler. I'm sure you've heard of me. Oh, who am I kidding? More likely you came to scoff at the worst juggler in the world. Thadal is a Bosma acrobat and juggler living in bliss. Her insanity seems to indicate that she is bipolar. Half of the time when you speak to her, she's happy and pleased with herself. Don't be shy. I'm really very approachable. You wanted an autograph, is that it? The other half, she regrets ever becoming a juggler, lamenting her status. I'm awful. Just awful. Why I became a juggler, I'll never know. My mother pushed me into it. On subsequent meetings, she'll give you different greetings, all depending on her mood for the day. You saw my last show and came to mock me, right? Don't worry, I already know. I disgust myself. Thadal also seeks out local residents for feedback on her performance to mixed reviews. Did you see my last performance? Did you like it? Do you call that juggling? You should be ashamed of yourself. If Thadal happens to drop the ball permanently... Oh, the nine divines! Help! Someone's been murdered! Her gravestone will read, In memory of Thadal, a juggler beyond compare, at least in her own mind. Gimme and hungry. Got food? Sweet cakes? Sausages? Fimian is a hungry Bosma commoner living on the streets of Bliss. When Fimian sees someone approach, he will greet them by muttering about food. Yes? I have idea for you. But first sweet roll for Fimian. Sweet roll for Fimian. Idea for you. Sweet roll. If during Ajazda's quest, Fimian hands over the coveted calming pants in return for a sweet roll. Sweet roll good. 
Fimian give pants. Got pie? Apples? Fimian hungry. Henceforth, he shall be pantsless and will walk around town in his underwear, but nobody seems bothered by this, least of all Fimian himself. In fact, most quest-related problems for Fimian can be solved with a sweet roll or tasty apple. No apples. Don't like apples. Got mutton? Fritters? Do not bother the Oriole with your petty conversation. See you. If Fimian was, say, poisoned by a particularly sinister apple, oh. his tombstone will then read, Fimian died hungry, or at least he thought he was. Sweet roll for Fimian. Yummy and dummy. Answer for you. Problem solved. Stay for a while. And stay away from my wife. Raven Bider is an Argonian publican and proprietor of the Choosy Beggar in Bliss. He's married to the notoriously thirsty Sheer Medish and loves her to such a degree that he warns each and every customer to stay away from her. Just keep your eyes on the menu and off of Sheer Medish. As a result of his paranoia, he spends all of his time on the ground floor of the inn without ever eating or sleeping within eyesight of his wife. Hello. A new visitor to our home? How wonderful. Better stay away from my wife. Raven goes so far as to become downright suspicious if you ask him for a bed. You want to stay here for a night, eh? Just for sleeping. You keep to yourself, mind your business, and stay away from my wife. If Raven's jealousy has him bite off more than he can chew, his tombstone will read, In memory of Raven Biter. He was one crazy son of a bitch. Hello, I'm Dumag Grobonk, best and prettiest smith in town. Dumag Grobonk is an orc smith living in bliss. Although superficially, he appears to be a masculine orc. In the script notes, it's written Dumag was originally a female character and arguably still acts very feminine, tending to flirt with any male characters he creates weapons and armor for. Bye, dear. Like his rival, Cutter, he's easily offended when customers visit her in Crucible instead of him. You think I'm ugly, don't you? And that she's a prettier smith, is that it? If the hero is male and has madness weapons or armor, he may say, An archer needs strong arms. I bet you could hold back that bow for quite a long time. Couldn't you, love? Although Dumag is essential, a gravestone is reserved for him at New Shayoth Graveyard. After making Dumag go bonk, <laughs> his tombstone's inscription reads, Dumag grow bonk. He made killing things fun again. Something smooth and sharp. Leave your foes sticky with blood. Cutter is a Bosma Smith living in Crucible, and she's the proprietor of Cutter's weapons and is maniacally obsessed with bloodshed, including her own, and with blood on the floor of her main trading room to prove it. You remain faithful. That is good. I will cut your throat if you visit that other smith. And will rebuke you on your return should you visit the missing pauldron in bliss. Do you enjoy it? Cutting my heart? Why visit that other smith? Unsurprisingly, as a fan of her own blood, Cutter can be found in Crucible's hidden fight club and will duel multiple people. Oh, that's gonna hurt! Even though Cutter is marked as essential, an epitaph for Cutter can be found in the graveyard. Upon her death, it reads, In memory of Cutter, she enjoyed every cut to the last, and she enjoyed that one the most. It cut her spirit free. I am Wide Eye, steward to his grace, the greatest Duke of Mania in all of history, Faden. He is my reason for being, my purpose in life. Wide Eye is an Argonian mage and a servant to the Duke of Mania, Thaden, to whom she is absolutely devoted. Are you here to see Thaden? I would be if I were you. Thankfully, I already have cause to speak to him every day. During the main quest, White Eye will give a variety of responses to the player's perils, all relating in one way or another to her many, many children spread across the realm. I heard the gatekeeper was killed. 
I do hope one of my hatchlings wasn't responsible. That'd be ever so embarrassing. During the addiction quest, Wide-Eye was supposed to give you revealing information about Thaden. Unfortunately, the order of the dialogue is wrong, so the rather disturbing revelation about her children can never be retrieved in-game. I'd do anything for him, anything at all. Eat my own young if he asked me to. A fact about Wide-Eye that seems important, as if she perishes with hatchlings in tow, her tombstone will read, In memory of Wide-Eye. May all her children prosper. You got some skooma, eh? Right, buddy? Pal? To share? Come on, pass the skooma already. Kaldana Monrius is an imperial commoner who lives a hard life in Crucible. She's a hardcore skooma addict who will always beg you to bring her some. Skooma! Skooma! The player can choose to deny Kaldana's skooma request to a variety of responses. Shouldn't tease me like that. I hope you'll trip and fall on a sword. Gifting Kaldana the forbidden nectar, she will become overwhelmed with joy. Oh, I can taste it already. Sweet, sweet skooma. If the player has given Kaldana Skooma at least once and then attempts persuasion, her disposition will be maxed at 100, and while the persuasion screen remains up, she'll perform a cheering animation. If Kaldana meets her untimely fate face down in a puddle, her tombstone will claim Kaldana Monrius. Last words, bring some Skooma to my wake. The fork for big head. Oh, where has Master put the fork? It sings alone, far from home. Sad, sad fork. Sad, sad Big Head. Big Head is an Argonian savant living in bliss, although many players remember encountering him first in Morrowind. Prey approaches. Big Head is maniacally obsessed with forks of all shapes and sizes and goes fork hunting every day, hoping to retrieve yet another piece to add to his sizable collection. But it is gone. Gone, gone, gone. No more singing. No more ringing. Taken from Big Head. Never returned. If the player were to gift Big Head his prize, the Fork of Heripolation, he will regale you with unique songs of thanks. You bring the fork. Happy day. The blind shall see. The lame shall walk. The short shall tall. Forks for all. Big Head names you friend. Songs of friendship. Songs of ship friends. Presents for you. Presents on hatching day. Big Head was hatched, but his brother was not. Presents for Egg Friend, almost forgot. Selfish Big Head, shellfish Big Head. The player, of course, could choose to fork Get Big Head and drive his pronged prize into his thighs to hear his death cries. Come on. Ah! Ah! Although, if you don't want blood on your fork and are feeling particularly cruel, it is an option to remove the fork of Heripolation from Big Head's person after gifting it to him. He will then become further unhinged, attacking anyone in sight with a fork in their inventory, which usually results in Big Head himself being viciously mauled in the streets should this occur. For the blood god! god. Oh. Unsurprisingly, Big Head's grave is adorned with a cheeky double entendre which reads, In memory of Big Head. Completely forked. I'll calicrack the fine do. I will! You tear it at it! Bolwing is a Bosma commoner living as a beggar in Crucible. Tell the Dane! Tell the Dane! Khan Sky is Ralphing! During the day, he can be found around the southern city gates, sometimes trying to converse with the dark seducers who will reject his babble. I saw the Zaxa, and I magged it too. Ah, oh, fibble! Apologies, citizen, but I must return to my post. Gal burst in it. He speaks only in his nonsense language in which he seems to rearrange words and phrases until they retain only the barest semblance of meaning. When citizens approach him talking about a particular topic, they will only be rewarded with the usual gibberish. Yes? Fribble. Just fribble. 
goodbye. However, during the fork of her Ripolation quest, the player briefly will receive a charm from Big Head to unjumble Bullwing's broken speech and, in a cruel twist of fate, find out he possesses an acute and, I dare say, shrewd mind. Fribble, just frib. Wait, you can understand me? Lovely. It's been too long since I was able to have a nice chat with someone. What a pleasant surprise. Previously, it was only poor Big Head who seemed to understand me, and he's always in such a lather about that fork. Not to mention, he's not one for idle rumors. I try not to burden myself with news of the current goings-on. It gets to be rather distasteful at times, don't you think? Take care. Come back for a chat whenever you have the chance. Although manners are greatly appreciated, if permanently silenced, Greetings and salutations! Bolwing's gravestone inscription reads I think his name was Bolwing. Orenthal, retired assassin. Now I live here. Only Red Guard here, incidentally. An interesting fact, isn't it? I do enjoy facts. Orenthal is a Red Guard assassin living in bliss. He's maniacally obsessed with facts, calculations, and statistics, and is often seen sharing his many pointless observations with his fellow townsfolk. Hello again. You don't happen to recall how many steps you took in getting here, do you? I was just wondering. Greetings. Did you know that I slept for exactly 237 minutes last night? I find that fascinating. Hello there. Have I mentioned that my left arm is actually one inch longer than my right? Never know when that might be important. Although statistically unlikely, if Orenthal should die, his tombstone will read, Numbers matter no more, for Orenthal has found eternity. Sickly Bernice, proprietor. Don't get too close now. You might catch what I have. <coughs> Sickly Benice is a hypochondriac Breton and proprietor of Sickly Benice's Tap House, the only place for beds, food, and drinks in Crucible. Well, it seems I am dying. Yes, these may be my last days in the Shivering Isles. She is convinced she is dying from her imaginary illness and asks you to retrieve a very special and unique medicine during the quest, A Liquid Solution. Oh, well, it's been a good life, I suppose. Benice is actually one of the few merchants with unique dialogue while bartering. As expected, she will take the opportunity to complain about her imaginary disease and will randomly utter, Thank you for purchasing. <laughs> Ironically, sickly Benice is actually very healthy, to the point of immortality. She's marked as essential and therefore will never die, whether or not you complete a related quest. As a result, by using commands, you can make sure she doesn't dodge death's sweet embrace. It's then her gravestone in New Shayoth's graveyard will read, This time, she was right. I'm Muireen. If you have any secrets, I'm the one to tell. I won't share them with anyone but my family. Unless they're good ones, that is. Muireen is an Ultima mage living with her uncle Leo in Crucible. She's obsessed with conspiracies and tries hard to find a pattern in everything. As such, she's known to share her wild theories with Uncle Leo, who happens to be a zombie living on the second floor of her house. Hello there. I just finished a lovely conversation with Uncle Leo. It seems he's not feeling well today. Lost an arm. During the Lady of Paranoia questline, you'll find out Murine is the mastermind behind the plot against Lady Sill. Under torture, Nelreen will also confess. I'm not even the one you want. Murine is behind it. You'll need solid proof to pin it on her. Once you confront Murine, however, she will freely give herself up, stating, I see you've done quite a bit of work to track me down. Yes, I orchestrated it. Syl deserves to die a painful death for turning on all of us and consorting with our enemies. Go ahead, do what you will. Nothing matters now. Haven't you got what you need? Shouldn't you be running off to tattle like a good little servant? When you inform Lady Syl about Murine's confession, the paranoid Duchess will say, Is that so? 
I shall have her brought to the torture chamber at once. Meet me there shortly. Murine will then relocate to the torture chamber in the House of Dementia for a final showdown with Lady Sill. If you approach her, then she will make one last threat. You've chosen a side, little one. You'll get what's coming to you eventually. Finally, Sill will shout out. You've confessed to attempting to kill me, I understand. The penalty for this treachery is death and is to be carried out immediately. And execute Murine without further warning. Once Murine is dead, her tombstone in Yushayoth will read, Murine rests with the knowledge that her death provides much gossip. Good to see you. We should have a drink sometime. Shirmedish is an Argonian commoner living at the Choosy Beggar in Bliss. She's married to the exorbitantly jealous proprietor, Raven Biter. Come back for a drink. Nonetheless, Shir doesn't shy away from socializing, partying, and most importantly, drinking with each and every person who visits the inn. The gatekeeper dead. Let's drink to the gatekeeper. Speaking of Raven's jealousy, Sheer happens to pay Dumag Grobonk a two-hour visit over at the Missing Pauldron and is known to inexplicably frequent his bedroom daily. Bye, dear. When Sheer eventually succumbs to alcohol poisoning, her tombstone will read, Beloved wife and loyal drinking companion. Interestingly, it doesn't read loyal wife and beloved drinking companion. Good seeing you, Lord Sheogorath. Could have bought a round, though. I like dogs. Dogs are pretty. Bisha is a Khajiit agent living in Crucible, New Shayoth, and he loves dogs. Unfortunately, the only dog in Crucible is Ushna Groshadbogobs, who is afraid of Khajiits and cats. He has a nice dog. I like dogs. Should you be intensely cruel and decide to dispose of Ushna's dog, Bisha will understandably be quite sad. Such a pretty dog. Dead, dead, dead. Ushna is sad. I heard from Bernice that Ushna might get another dog. A new dog. Maybe Ushna will let me pet him. If the player approaches Bisha after taking the mantle of Shea Gorath, he will greet them saying, Please do make it rain, burning dogs. This, of course, is a callback referencing the Border Watch quest for Shea Gorath in the main game of Oblivion, where one of Shea Gorath's many plagues on the poor folks of Border Watch was to rain burning dogs down upon the town. Good times! Good times! I hope you had as much fun as I did. Here, take this. It's a fun little toy. Now go away before I kill you. Ushna also asks the player to make Bisha disappear as part of the quest Ushna's Terror. Yes, he's the one. Isn't he scary? I wish someone would just make him disappear. Interestingly, due to this request, Bisha is the only NPC to have two possible epitaphs to show up in the new Shayoth graveyard. If killed in Ushna's Terror quest... <laughs> His gravestone will read, in memory of Bisha, killed because he loved dogs. If Bisha is killed before the quest, it will read, in memory of sweet, harmless Bisha. Ew, you smell worse than that cat, Bisha. Get away from me. Ushna Groshadborgob is an orc publican living in Crucible. He is deathly afraid of cats. Stop following me, you smelly cat and asks you to make Bisha the Khajiit, who is enamored with his dog, to disappear. He's still around. I've seen him skulking like the filthy cat he is. Despite his ever-present stalker, Ushna tries to overcome his fears and live a normal life. He leaves the house every morning at 6am and is immediately sought out by Bisha but manages to walk his dog for four hours. If the player approaches Ushna and happens to be of Khajiit persuasion, things are entirely different, and the paranoid orc will not even hand you the quest. In fact, he'll look at you and say, You, you're a cat. Get away from me. Kill, kill the cat. <laughs> Good dog. Talking to him will then have him set his dog on you right away. <laughs> After the fight, if you still approach him, he will say, You? You're one of them. What do you want with me? Scratch me with your claws? Steal my breath? My babies will protect me. 
and on subsequent meetings he will change to. Why do you torture me? I don't want any trouble with your kind. I've got dogs, you know. Vicious ones. All over the Shivering Isles, people will be amused about Ushnar and his cat problem. Ushnar in Crucible is afraid of cats. Cats. <laughs> That's ridiculous. I understand there's a Khajiit beggar that follows him around just to annoy him. If Ushna meets a cat astrophe, his gravestone will read, he asked to be buried with his beloved dog. Oh well. Hello, my name is Tove, the unrestful they call me. So much to do and so little time. There's only one of me to go around, you know. Tove the Unrestful is a Nord commoner living in bliss. He seeks your help in finding calipers and tongs to build a mysterious sky boat with. A marvelous contraption. I've gotten it to float in water perfectly. Now if I can just get the water to fly through the air, that's what the calipers and tongs are for. I need them to keep the water airborne. Tove seems to have trouble understanding the laws of the physical world, along with the concept of time, or just maybe, he understands it better than anyone. It all happened tomorrow. I'm sure this conversation will all come back to you in a day or two. Though some mad folk are dubious about Tove's building abilities, as he can frequently be found hacking at his beloved skyboat with the front end of his axe. Tove the Unrestful in Bliss is definitely not collecting items to build something. He couldn't build a rock with a stone. Returning to Tove with a sizable mix of a hundred calipers and tongs, Tove proceeds to ask, Calipers? Tongs? What would I need those for? Oh, you must be thinking about the skyboat. Yesterday's news. I'm working on a collapsible fork now. I just have to tear apart the boat to get to the hinges. Putting an axe to Tove's latest project, and any other project, oh. his gravestone will read, In memory of Tove the Unrestful, his works completed, may he finally find rest. I don't belong here. I'm not crazy, not like the rest of them. They watch me, you know waiting for me to go crazy. But I won't. Nope. Ungor is a Bosma commoner living on the streets in Bliss. Ungor claims to be sane, but in a sad irony, he's completely obsessed with proving his sanity as well as his escape from the Isles. I'm leaving. I've got to find a way out of here. When you approach him, the paranoid beggar will ask, I'm not like them. Are you? Are you one of them? After the conversation, he will assure you. During the Falling Awake quest, you must help out the overly paranoid, amiable Fanrien finding a place to sleep. Asking the other homeless individuals will net you information pointing to Ungor. In Crucible, Glue Rolross will stop talking about sticks for a minute and instead show a huge amount of hatred towards Ungor. Oh, here's a notion for you. Ungor really gets on us nerves. You could kill or persuade himself to leave. Run him through, or run him out, I mean. Yeah, get rid of him. Then your friend can sleep outside in Ungor's bed. Taking Ungor out of the picture permanently. <laughs> His grave will read, Ungor finally got out of this city. Shea Gorath watch over his spirit. Hello, I'm Una Armina. Perhaps you've heard of my Museum of Oddities. There you can view all the finest oddities of the realm. I'm always looking for new exhibits, so be sure to think of me when you see anything odd. Una Armina is an Imperial Savant and the curator of the Museum of Oddities in Crucible. She will offer a finder's fee in exchange for oddities found throughout the Isles in the related quest. She has a very poor short-term memory and will forget things that happened minutes ago. Is this your first time to the museum? Perhaps you would care for a tour. I am the curator of the Museum of Oddities, Una Armina. Have we met? You look familiar. 
Anyway, I'm always looking for new exhibits, so remember me when you come across anything odd. If you accept a guided tour around the museum, she will be delighted. Wonderful. Follow me and I'll show you around my little collection of oddities. Especially as she will buy the same item from the player multiple times due to her forgetfulness, and will even forget she has already acquired certain items right in front of her. Hmm. You, you haven't seen a huge severed arm with an axe for a hand anywhere, have you? I seem to have misplaced mine. Oh well. If you attempt to jog Una's memory with a mallet to the noggin, <laughs> her tombstone will then read, In memory of Una Amina, a true oddity. Something you need? So many things to need. Tilsi Araleth is a Dhamma trader, living in bliss and owns a general store named Common Treasures. Unlike many of her fellow citizens, Tilsi seems sane until she starts to speak, at which point an unhealthy obsession with things emerges. Goodbye. If you find any interesting things, let me know. Citizens in Nusha'ath are divided over the merits of Tilsi's questionable merchandise. Tilsi Araleth has quite a collection of things for sale at Common Treasures. Common Treasures is full of junk. That's all Tilsa Araleth collects. Should Tilsi become permanently overburdened due to her want on hoarding, ah! her tombstone is further inscribed with her obsession with possessions, reading, she couldn't take it with her. You're talking to me, and I don't like you. Goodbye. Eril is an Ultmer enchanter who owns a shop in Crucible called Eril's Mysteries. Eril calls himself a student of chronomancy, which is the study of the magic of time alteration. Firm arms, a strong back, yes, you'll do nicely. It's a shame, time will ravage you, destroy you, wither you, but there are alternatives. It becomes quickly apparent that Eril's intense studies of time alteration may have had some negative impact on his sanity. You will be perfectly preserved, taken out of time, beautiful forever. I will display you with the rest in my collection. If Eril is perfectly preserved in time, well, at least partially, his tombstone in the new Sheoff graveyard will read, he taught us to make the seconds count before we close our eyes. Well, Hello there. It's good to see such a well-equipped individual as yourself around these parts. Brythower is a Bosma thief living in Crucible. You got a problem? He continues to annoy the other residents of Crucible with his unfettered kleptomania. Oh, how could anyone have a problem with me? Come now. He may even lift some septums from the player as he greets them. Or is there something else I can take from that I mean help you with? For this reason, shop owner Eril requests that you get rid of him. That lout? Yes, he's a thorn in my side that never seems to go away. I'd have his heart on a plate if I could. For one thing, he's a thief. But what irks me the most is that he's a Bad thief. Between my shop and a few others in Crucible, he's been caught stealing maybe a dozen times last month. A fact, Brythower himself is well aware. I know what people say about me. I'm not completely stupid, you know. It's just that I like to collect things. All sorts of things. Shiny things, valuable things. I can't help myself. Upon prematurely pinching Brythower's life essence, Ugh. and by pinching life essence, I mean you can literally do as Eril asks and serve up Brythower's heart to him on a plate for his crimes. Very nice. In fact, I may be able to make use of this particular item. Seems like a nice potential replacement. Brythower's gravestone will then read, in the end, his last breath was stolen from him. Hello. Don't mind me. I'm a little tired. Can't sleep at home, you know. The walls, they aren't safe. Amiable Thanrien is a Breton conjurer living in bliss near Sheoth. He is extremely paranoid and is in constant fear that his house's walls will fall down and kill him. I've seen some people sleeping out on the street, but they huddle too close to the walls. I need someplace safe. I can't just sleep anywhere. This paranoia makes him have much more in common with the residents of Crucible 
than those of his native bliss. Once you meet Amiable, he will ask you to find him a place outdoors where he can sleep safely. Oh, don't tease me. It's serious. I could die. We all could die. Please, help find a safe spot outside to sleep where the walls won't come crashing down. However, after you help put Amiable to sleep permanently, his grave will read, Amiable Fanrien, fallen before the walls did. Wanna buy a stick? I got a fresh one right here. No? Then what can I do for you? Glurol Ross is a Bosma commoner living in Crucible. He will usually ask the player if they want to buy a stick, and conversations with him often end up on the subject of sticks. The young folk just don't appreciate a good stick anymore. After waking up, he wanders around near his bed until 10am when he finds his favourite spot near the entrance to Bliss, where he spends the entire day offering sticks to citizens passing by. I've got fresh sticks! Guaranteed no leaves. Blessings of the Mad God, citizen. Walk without fear. After completing the main quest, Glurol Ross will be quite fascinated by your brand new staff of Sheogorath saying, Your stick is a lot nicer than mine, Sheogorath. And leaving the conversation with a sad, I wish I had a stick like that. If Glurol Ross is killed, <laughs> his tombstone will read, In memory of Glurol Ross, sticks and stones broke his bones. It's gone. All of it gone. Have you seen any of it? Any of my things? The others, they think I'm stealing, but I just want my things back. Mazada is a Khajiit thief living in Crucible, and is, along with several other citizens, part of a major conspiracy to assassinate Lady Sill, the Duchess of Dementia. I will, I will. I want to see Sill dead just as much as you do. She cannot be allowed to survive after what she's done. It's despicable. Working as an Inquisitor, the player can choose to lean on Mazada for information, which he states. She and Thedon, they've been meeting in secret. They've been doing things together, consorting. You understand me? It cannot be permitted. She must be stopped. I shall bring you names, I promise. Meet me in my house tomorrow at midnight. I'll have the information for you. When you arrive at his house, you'll find him lying on the floor, slain by an unknown killer, presumably Nelreen, or the mastermind behind the plot. After the quest, the tombstone will appear in New Shaoth Graveyard, reading, Mazada found that which he did not seek, the sharp end of a blade. So much to gather, so little time. Perhaps you can help. You might help against the coming storm. Ajazda is a Khajiit enchantress and is the owner of Things Found located in Crucible. She's quite paranoid about the world coming to an end. Am I? Am I? It's not paranoid when they're really out to get you. That's why I've been stockpiling supplies. I'll be ready. As such, she will ask you to retrieve three items for her so that she may prepare for the coming storm. It's coming. I think I'm the only one who sees it, though, and I'm going to be ready. Oh, yes, I'll be ready. In return, Ajazda will teach you the greater power Ajazda's Paranoia, which is frenzy up to level 25 in a 50-foot radius for 10 seconds on touch, and unfortunately, for all caught in its wake, will erupt in an indiscriminate and violent brawl. Back so soon. And glowing with success, I see. After Ajazda's untimely demise, her grave will read, In memory of Ajazda, the world wasn't coming to an end, only her. Thanks for watching. If you haven't already, please consider subscribing. And a huge shout out to the unofficial Elder Scrolls pages. The wiki was the backbone of the video. I couldn't have done it without them. Also, if you want to see more Elder Scrolls videos, please, for the love of the Mad God, tell me what you want to see. I loved making this video. Oblivion is my favorite game. And expect more videos on the Shivering Isles and of the upcoming Sky Oblivion game when it drops and news until it does. As always, thanks for watching. And until next time, Traveler. Hello. Ajazda in Crucible believes the world is ending.
I heard she has been stockpiling magic items just in case. Goodbye, and watch yourself. Yes? Things found? <laughs> More like things found in the trash. There's no reason to shop in that dump. <sighs> Bye. Hey there, chief. <laughs>